when you travel along the M6 motorway to Penrith over Shap, you run alongside the West Coast main line. And often in the distance, well, I look out for it anyway, I can see a stone viaduct. And I've often wondered, often wondered where this stone viaduct goes off to. Now, as you've just watched, that I've been wandering around looking to see if I could trek along and find it on foot. I've done quite a bit of walking, but I've had to move the car and take an antihistamine. And I've managed to park not far from here. And I knew as soon as I saw it, because I've been on Google Earth, I knew as soon as I saw it that this is definitely in the right spot and I can see the viaduct now. I'm going to have to show you this, aren't I? I'm so nervous climbing this bridge. Wow, what a view. I'm gonna climb on the next one. Let's put the camera down here. <laughs> wow, this is amazing. It's really, uh, really odd actually unique to be able to watch the west coast main line from this side before i do my script i'm gonna sit on this beautiful viaduct in this fantastic weather and um i'm gonna have my pat lunch a hundred foot up in the low gill valley you can't get any better than that Fred Dim would be proud of me. I can remember, you know, up here, there's quite a climb. When it was raining and wet, many and many times they would have to bring a train up behind and push. Two, two, one right. in front, one behind. Yeah. Oh, but there was some noise then, wasn't there? Oh, yeah. I can remember it plain as day. Yeah? Yeah. Oh. I'd only be about six or seven when passenger trains. Yeah. Uh, they just went up to there like that. Good strains carried on going a little bit longer. Yeah. Well, with my dad, they would offer to buy it, like, you know, buy it, so we bought the land off. I don't know, it'd be pretty real, I guess. But uh, there's a lot of interest in that viaduct. Right. It is on quite a curve, isn't it? I've got, a, I've got an old uh, photograph of a train that smoked, you know. Right? Oh, wow. And I did, I've got it framed. The set woods inside tie bars, and across with them, yeah, the thing outside sticking through. Yeah, yeah. On the bed, yeah, right? that's it, yeah. They're in, like, in a, in a, in a, in a, it'll be like a straight road that goes through, and they're just as good as the day they went in, because they're in uh, wood and in pitch pine. Right, really? Wow. But I just questioned today if they could build it that like that. Not a chance. Not what they would, it'd take five years, wouldn't it? It was really, really sweet and nice to, uh, to talk to him. He lives in the farm just behind me here, telling me all the stories about when he lived here as a kid and it was a railway line. Oh, I love stuff like that. Uh, and he was encouraging me to climb over. He said he gave me permission to, to climb over. The bridge itself he thinks belongs to uh, Heritage England or something similar. Um, it's a great two listed building now. But he was saying I'm more than welcome to uh, people could do it all the time to climb over. I'm gonna have to hold on. <sighs> I'm going to have to hold on here. This is, uh, this is very treacherous. I can't control the camera and walk along it at the same time. You will have to bear with me because I do not want to fall. What is a hundred foot drop? Oh wow, I just want to touch the viaduct or stand on this bit here. I'm not sure if I'm going to climb into it. Ooh. We'll have to have a look. Just to give you an idea of how far down this is and look where I'm standing on this bridge itself. But this is amazing that I'm on this viaduct. And uh, as much as he offered that it would be okay for me to perhaps have a venture on there, uh, I'd rather not. It's quite overgrown and uh, I think I'll do the rest of my script on terra firma, but I'm touching Logil Viaduct. And that is a brilliant, brilliant thing. Just as I was talking to the farmer, so 
but the farm over here to the right hand side, he was telling me that uh, when he was a lad and they were ripping the railway line down, that they had the opportunity to uh, to purchase some things from the from the railway line itself. And if I just bring myself a little bit closer, he was saying that there was an old signal, uh, a semaphore signal that was on the north side of Low Gill Viaduct, a distant one that they salvaged, that they bought and they kept. And then they now use it as the sign to their farm. Davy Bank Farm, big thumbs up from me. And thanks for the great info that you were telling us before. Absolute gem. And imagine having this archway, this old railway archway as your entrance to your home every single day from work or from school. That can't be bad, can it? Beautiful. Right, so I'm going to head off now to get the viaduct in the background. Have a great shot of it. Maybe get a couple of clips of the West Coast Main Line as well. Uh, and tell you a little bit more about this railway. <laughs> So that way is Penrith, that way is Lancaster making your way back down to Preston and over there is the M6 and that little bit of stonework that you can see behind me is the Low Gill Viaduct. Before construction on the line, this branch was once to be called the Autumn Branch or the Loon Valley Line. But once it was built, it was officially known as the Ingleton Branch Line. Originally, three big massive railway companies were keen to take on this line and its transport opportunities right back to 1846. The big vendors of the railways, shall we say, were intensely keen to harness the terrain for the vision of having it as a first main line route from London to Scotland way before the West Coast Main Line was ever built. Competition from the Midland Railway, London North Western Railway and the Great North Railway were in such a disarray of the plans and the future prospects of the line, the offer from Parliament was soon to be expired. Well, so many ice creams doing that. So the North Western Railway applied for an extension and granted by Parliament in 1852. But this was also saturated with issues as the line would not have been built within the original timescale, thus having to get another special extension, a third. Eventually, in 1856, two rival bills were put before Parliament. One was from the North Western Railway, with the support of the Great Northern Railway, who wanted to construct the main line route from London to Scotland. And this proposal was from Ingleton to Kirby Lonsdale, right up the Loon Valley to join the Lancaster and Carlisle Railway, just south of T-Bay. But the Lancaster and Carlisle Railway wanted to block its rival Great North and Western Railway for its ambitions to reach Scotland. Just not cricket. Uh, Lancaster and Carlisle route was different to the Northwestern route as it was separated into four stages. So it passed closer to the sound of Sedbird to join the main Lancaster and Carlisle railway line, much further south than the existing Low Gill station. Eventually, in favour of the Lancaster and Carlisle rail offer, a bill was passed. Hey! On the 25th of August 1857. I feel like Godfrey out of Dad's army. This is seriously making me want to go to the talk. Come follow me down here. I don't know if it's going to follow me. Well, this beck is absolutely pretty and beautiful. When the government gave permission to build about eight miles of railway between Ingleton and T-Bay, it was tended into four contracts given out by the Lancaster and Carlisle Railway between 1858 and 1861. Stage one of over a mile from Low Gill and included Low Gill Viaduct of 11 arches, each 45 feet wide with a maximum height 
of 90 feet was awarded to Samuel Buxton of Leeds. Stage two of around four miles included two major bridges, one known as the Waterside Viaduct, 530 feet long with 100 feet height, both with cast metal central arches. And this was awarded to Coulthardon Allen, who had built the Clapham to Ingleton Northwestern Railway Line some 10 years earlier. And stage three and stage four was awarded to James Taylor. Now this covered over 12 miles of flatter plains and this ending down by the Ingleton Viaduct of 11 arches, 57 feet wide and 800 feet long with a maximum height of 80 feet. Now it took about 1,600 navvies and over 70 horses to build this 18 mile stretch railway. And the changes and the conflicts even continued during and after the line was built. During construction, arguments and disagreements continued about the sharing of the Midland Station at Ingleton. So the Lancashire and Carlisle Railway built its own station at Ingleton. The two stations were at opposite ends of the viaduct. So the Lancashire and North Western Railway had taken over the Lancaster and Carlisle Railway Company by the time the line was opened on the 16th December 1861. And the Midland Railway had taken over the North Western Railway, which still owned... Where are you going? And the Midland Railway had taken over the North Western Railway, which still owned the line beyond Ingleton. Both companies purposely did not cooperate together, especially when it came down to the timetabling. You would walk over a mile to get from one station to the other, and often passengers would have to wait hours for a connecting train. Seeing this happening, it had a massive negative effect on the railway line, and the Midland Railway eventually agreed to allow the London North Western Railway trains to terminate at the Midland Station. Both Ingleton stations remained open, but connections weren't agreed for the timetables. And it carries on. The Midland Railway wanted to use Ingleton branch as a main route for Scotland London services, and the London North Western Railway that already had such a service refused to cooperate, knowing that this section was actually a tad shorter. And that, though, didn't stop the Midland Railway. If they could not have it via the Ingleton branch line, then they would build another line well away from this conflict they'd had enough. In 1666, the Midland Railway applied to build a line from Settle to Carl Isle, and it was approved. With the Settle and Carl Isle line proving its wealth in gold, the closure of the limestone quarries, the closure of the Ingleton colliery, and the 1923 merger of the London North Western Railway and the Midland Railway into the London Midland and Scottish Railway. This caused the Ingleton station to close and a route from Clapham to Teabay was open and then they reduced the line to a single track. Apart from a temporary release section, if required, the line was demoted to a rural branch line and it never ever obtained its mainline status. From one good train and four two coach passenger trains a day in each direction, this was reduced to two small passenger trains by 1944. In 1948, the nationalisation of all the railway companies was brought into act, and then this proved that this line was therefore uneconomical, especially compared to the very popular feasible Settle and Carlisle railway line and instruction was given by Parliament to stop all services running on this section altogether. So the process started I think January 1954 all passenger services were withdrawn from this line apart from ferrying a few school children to the local boarding schools a few special weekend trains and usual goods traffic the axe was about to fall on this line. However, it was put forward to keep the line open as a relief section line if trains, say for instance, couldn't make it up the Settle and Carlisle line or make it from T-Bay down to Lancaster, they could use this in emergencies. However, that just wasn't enough and unfortunately the rails and some bridges were lifted in April 1967. Once that starts to take place, then there's no chance of getting services back on this line. Well, today the line can be generally followed along most of the way. Some of it now forms the A65 at Kirby Longsdale. And Kirby Longsdale, Barber and Sedbur stations are now private homes. And both of the troubled stations at Ingleton 
were demolished. They probably couldn't wait to get rid of that saga. Apart from the quarrels and the arguments during the initial stages and the building of the Settlement Carlisle Railway Line from 1866, both rival railway companies agreed to cooperate. So the Midland Railway then wanted to scrap the construction of the Settlement Carlisle Railway Line but the government declined and said that they've got to build it come what may. And that wouldn't be the first time the Settlement Carlisle Railway Line has faced the axe. Unlike the Ingleton Branch Line, which has been shut now since 1967. And that is a cracking viaduct. Right, time to finish off my sandwich. Find somewhere really nice to sit down. Now I've told you all that bump about the bridge. I'll tell you, if I lived here, I would never get bored of looking at that structure right behind me. That is beautiful. If you want to know how to come along and find this structure, this viaduct here at Low Gill, I'll put the links and the details in the, in the description area below. But you've definitely got to bring your packed lunch and your kids here to check this viaduct out because it's beautiful. So please, don't forget to like and subscribe. That really gets me going for this channel.